You can see it's in the, the green, the green wire and everything. And then the blue wire, normally if it taps to the relay, because the starter solenoid is nothing but the relay, it just kind of turns a smaller voltage into a higher voltage or transfer over. So this is has a built-in relay, the solenoid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our blue wire. This is our blue wire here. And what? actually, no, we're not using the blue wire, just testing continuity on the wire first, I apologize. Okay, so what we're gonna do is probe the other one here. Let me leave the blue wire alone. What? Okay, so let me get my, now where's my black probe? I got so many wires here, I'm what? trying to figure out. <laughs> there you go. So I got my black probe here, right? We're going from the other end now, the wire that we think. So we're going to test this out. So we're going to see if that green wire is the same as the green solenoid wire that we were trying to test the blue wire on, right? So let's go and do that. Now mind you, we blow a few fuses before, and I wouldn't be surprised if we keep blowing them again, especially with moisture to introduce. Okay, now it's going to be a little harder for me because it's not that much reach. What? And I need to really get in there. Oh, I can get in from the back here. There you go. They always have a back door, right? These wires. So we'll test for continuity here. We're, we're not testing connection faulty or nothing like that, so it's fine. I know there's good connection here or else it wouldn't start the scooter. And I'm gonna show you another challenge we have with the scooter. I believe this is the same. I wanna make sure, how, look how it changes color on this. Now, actually this becomes a solid, I think there's a green still in there, but I'm not too sure. But it looks like a solid yellow more, right? And then the other one still has this color of the um, orange with red stripe. So yeah, and then on the, this side end, it's like a green and uh, uh, yellow with green stripes and uh, red stripe with um, yellow again. So yeah, see how it changes color? We can never even for sure know what's gonna be color of the flavor of the, the other end. So anyway, we're gonna test continuity. If you hear anything, I don't hear anything. Not yet anyways. Oh, I do hear it. Yeah, I do hear it. If you can, maybe I can put the mic near the, the meter here. So here's the meter here, right? Okay. I'm trying to get resolution. I'm tapping my meter. <laughs> okay, here we go. So now I'm going to go and put my meter here and watch you hear it little by little, little bit. Here we go. One, two, three. See that? Take it out. Put it back in. Take it out. Put it back in. I'm sorry. You should see it while I'm probing it so you can see where the sound's coming from. But I want to be close to the meter as well so you can hear both without all the dogs and all the music behind it. Here we go. You hear that? Now I'm going to probe on the other end as well. And we're going to find out if that also gives the same continuity test. So like I said again, these, these two wires are actually joined together. They're continuity in both wires together. So there you go. See that? That's also so the same. So what that tells me is this wire is actually the same. It's going to the solenoid stator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put the blue wire there instead. So let's go and put the blue wire there. Again, we're just working on our auto remote start right now. We can get power to the battery. We already got the lights already connected, you know, from the thing, but we're just trying to get the remote start to work. And hopefully we don't have to build a relay. We might have to actually make a relay to join to the solenoid or something's causing this to not uh, get into start. So we'll figure that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my blue wire here. And if you notice on the top here that we connected previously, see that right there? That right there, that wire, that uh, orange stripe, I mean, sorry, red stripe with the orange, that's actually the same continuity it's on here. So what that tells me is it's also the same continuity going down from the handlebar harness all the way to this wire right here. So they're the same continuity. If that's the same continuity, then I'm just gonna go and grab my blue wire here. And I guess we know it's the first slot, right? Of where that green and yellow stripe or yellow and green stripe, doesn't matter how you say it. It's the same one. And you notice there, I'm gonna shove it all in there or as much as I can anyway. Okay. There we go. It's not the greatest in there. Let me see if I can just shove it to the probe. I also wanna show you another challenge that we have, which is, I guess is a good challenge because we're always thinking of upgrading the scooter here and there anyway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and, well, if you can see it now, I'm gonna go ahead and shove this blue wire. Try to get a little bit more contact as possible. So I need to bundle it up like this. That will it'll touch it from any angle as long as it's in there near. Okay, so here we go. There we go. It's shoved in pretty good. 
whole thing is shoved in there actually. You see there, it's shoved into that blue wire. And now we're gonna go and test our remote and see if it actually uh, starts the scooter with the orange wire connected to the ignition, the ground wire and the positive wire connected to the battery and we also have our lights flickering on so you can actually see it. But let's go and text to make sure our alarm works, you'll hear it. So that means our alarm is working. Now we unlocked it, right? Just to make sure. Now here we go, we're gonna try to start the scooter with the remote. See that? We have our driving light come on, so that is something different we didn't get before. But no, it's not starting, see? Pushing it many times. I mean, I'll even hold on to it, just to see. So something's not tricking over the relay. So we're not worried about the destabilizing yet of the pink and gray wire, but we want to... Now I want to show you another issue we're having. If you focus here, we're getting a burst of smoke when the engine always starts. And I'm thinking it might be a blown head gasket, but I'm not too sure. So I'm going to put my camera right here and you guys can see it firsthand where that smoke is coming from I'm gonna start it manually of course with my key okay here we go all right you ready to see some uh, some nice smoke effect you know it'd be great if it's coming from the exhaust and you know looking good like that but if it's coming from your cylinder head that's another question and nothing coming from the spark plug I checked the spark plug and it's just a nice uh, tan copper color it might be running too lean, maybe is what's causing that, or it could be because we took out the head gasket so many times and the base uh, cylinder uh, gasket uh, didn't actually get enough maybe seal. So we might have to take it out and just do a little copper spray on it. Because if you leave it on too long, what happens is it's going to create a little um, grease mark. I got that information from uh, David there, a uh, Tata expert. And um, what that does, it maybe causes the, the cylinder head to... Um, you know, create a grease mark where they're actually, it's gonna break. Over time, it's gonna, you know, wear out the cylinder head contact and you don't, you'll, you'll lose compression. So right now I'm gonna go ahead and make sure you guys see a good shot of this. Let's see if I can even lighten it up. All right, maybe this will be the perfect shot, I don't know. But I really want you guys to see it because I'm about to fire it up and you're gonna, you're gonna see where it came from. Okay, here we go, I'm gonna stay focused. Maybe even go inside the bar a little bit. Or maybe underneath. Yeah, maybe underneath because it's usually coming from here and it usually leaves a white spaticle. I know it's like right there. It leaves it right there. See this residue right there? It's not very much. It's just very light over time. But I think it's going to... Let's see where it's coming from. This is a good shot right here. I thought at first it came from the stator. But then I start noticing it's more in deep. You guys can see it that way? Or maybe try to get a really good shot of it. Okay, I think this is probably good enough. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go and start the scooter. And you can see where that white smoke just all of a sudden pops. A little too light there, you can't see the stator. Okay, there we go. Okay, watch this. I'm going to go and turn it on. You can see a little smoke pop. Okay, turn on my kill switch, hold my brake lever. Okay, here it goes. One, two, three. Everything is running fine. Uh, it's just that burst of smoke that we're concerned about. See my headlights coming back on. Sorry, I lighted it up now. Let me relight it. Everything's working out. This dog really likes uh, the scooter. For some reason, he likes to chase it. Uh, he's really chasing it almost a mile around. Our exhaust coming out of smoke. Okay, okay, no, 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 don't scrap my, don't scrap my electric dog. Okay, so here we go. Okay. What did he just do? <laughs> Hope he didn't get his teeth on my. Oh, he did. He got his, his teeth on here. He almost yanked the scooter off. Crazy dog. Okay, so here we go. You can see here. Uh, no, it's not a toy. What is wrong with you? Get out. My God, he just put scratch marks on my scooter. What's this? Crazy dog is not game. Okay. Here we go. We're gonna get the this so the spark plug here you can see is very tight. 
I'm going to open that up. I'm going to show you the spark plug condition of it right now that we could see. <laughs> Cook my towel. Okay, let me get the socket for the spark plug. There we go, we got give it a good wipe. I guess the rain's coming moist here. You got dog paws all over my car. Look at that right there too. Bad dog. Yeah, I think maybe his previous owner had a motorcycle or something. He liked to chase it around. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take out the spark plug. That way you can see the condition of the spark. And if it's too light, that means the air mixture screw is not exactly what we're looking for because it's too much lean, meaning it's not enough fuel in there, enough gas and fuel mixture properly. And if it's too much gas in there or too much air and fuel mixture, you're gonna see it burnt like a dark co uh, coffee color. So I'm gonna go lefty loosey. There we go, one, two, three. All right, ignition's back off, kill switch is off. I always forget that. Now it's getting wet. It's enough mist here. I can actually clean my scooter a little bit, get all the dust. So a little water ain't gonna hurt us. Just be careful, don't get your hand to touch that right there. That is hot. Even for less than 30 seconds, that exhaust pipe turns a nice golden color and that is extremely hot. Okay, I'm trolling the spark plug off. That way you can see You might want to also put some anti-seize because after a while these spark plugs almost melt into the, the ceramic or the aluminum of the piston. That way you can replace it because you'll need to change spark plugs so often. Uh, probably maybe every tune-up, once a year perhaps, depending how often you drive it. So there we go. Yeah, so our, I'm not sure where that smoke came from, but you guys saw it. So I'm going to review the video back and hopefully see it myself. But it might be just from the gasket. If it comes from the base, then we got another concern. It might be the base gasket. Again, the head gasket we took off, remember, a few times to check our timing and inspect our chain. So you can see here, this is how it looks. It's in the light here now. Let's see if I can get resolution on that. There we go. See that? Not too bad of a color. You know, it's not like a light and it's not too of a dark so it's more like a tan so we will put that back in there you want to torque this to about maybe no more than seven pounds and then your cylinder stud there you want to torque it to about 180 inch pounds so equivalent to about a good probably 14 or 15 pounds of torque so that way it compresses your gasket and everything else, you know, properly. And then you also want to tighten your ch uh, chain uh, studs, the two that's on the side of it. You want to torque those. Um, they're about, what, 8 millimeter. So you probably want to torque those the same amount. Uh, tightness, about maybe 7, 7 to 10 foot-pounds. Give it a good snug tight. There we go. Okay, I'm going to tighten just a little bit here and then I'm going to use my, my torque there. I can show you how to torque this back to spec. Lefty Lucy doesn't apply here. Okay. Okay, so there I just tighten this a little bit here. And then we're going to put our torque socket here and we're going to tighten further correctly. So we're going to do about 80, uh, 84 inch pounds because that's equivalent to uh, 7 foot pounds sure all my sockets in here there we go yeah get the right attachment so I have several different attachments I use to be able to go from bigger to lower and then bigger <laughs> so I got three here so we're gonna go from this side to the other side to the other side just to get our socket in there. I think our socket might be, actually, you know what? It is this side, so we don't have to worry about. Okay, so we wanna set this to about 75. 
I'm sorry, seven inch pounds. I mean, seven foot pounds. So it's equivalent to 84 inch pounds. So you just have to do conversion. I just use Google for that one. So it's not like I'm a, a whiz on understanding the conversion. Okay, so the, how this works is you retract it like this and then you can spin it because you can't spin it like this, it locks. So you hold down the retraction here and then you can spin it. So what I'm gonna look for is 80. It's way too high for me right now. There it goes, getting there. I'm at the 90 mark. See there, 90. 80. All right, just gonna go above that. Here it goes, or below it, see that? 84. That's pretty much how you set the torque right here. And then when it gets to about seven foot pounds, it's gonna click off. You won't be able to turn it anymore. So we're gonna do about seven foot pounds here on our spark plug. Great, that, everything's extended. There we go, I hear a click, you hear a click? There you go, see it? You hear it once, to show you. See, it's not gonna let us go anymore. Well, it could, but you don't want to, right? So if I try it again, see there, it still clicks. That means there's enough tight right there. They recommend about 7.23, to eight 23 foot pounds if it's a uh, regular aluminum. Now if it's something a little bit stronger, they can go up to 7.3 to about 10 or something on the spark plug. But I recommend going to the lowest one just to make sure you're covered. Uh, you know, you can always re-tighten something, but you don't want to over torque something. Here we go, so now we go. And you don't want under tighten too because you don't want to vibrate off and cause more serious damage. You know, the parts as well as, uh, see that? Put that back in. Spark plug doesn't look too shabby, huh? Yeah, we only had the scooter uh, dri driven for the last, what, week? So, and I only took it for a test drive here and there just to fire up the battery from time to time daily to make sure that uh, it doesn't um, start. So I'm gonna start again, and hopefully that crazy dog doesn't come and, you know, ruin our scooter. Make sure I'll try to get him out of the way, chase him out. Here we go. We're gonna fire it up. One, two, three. Oh, turn on the key. Turn on the kill ignition. Here we go. One, two, three. You're going to check it out. I'm going to make sure I get the good resolution for you. Okay, I think the marking is somewhere around there. Here we go. Hey! And that's it for right now. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start basically trying to solder the connector tips in here, get the alarm stabilized, and then we're gonna be able to play around with the three wires that were still pending or what they're where they're going, which probably be more than likely is our pink wire, our gray wire, and our blue wire, and possibly our orange wire, because we're not too sure that goes to the ignition wire, even though it says it on the RN. And we're probably gonna to have to split the black and white skunk wire and again tap the the gray and pink wire, but Again, um, I think APM is gonna have a suggestion and idea. Maybe we're gonna actually install a relay instead. So he told me to keep it open, but just make sure you hardwire the other wire. So I assume we hardwire just fine, just the way this tapping right now, because I don't want to actually start putting things in place yet until I for certain know all the wires, just like I did with this one. I kept on retesting and testing it out, and now you can see here all the wires are sorted nicely, uh, nice as possible. And now everything works. Our Gibby lights, our tail lights, our signal lights, and everything else works. So now I can hit the alarm. Right here. Out. He just wants to come when the, the alarm. He thinks this is actually a separate uh, animal. So I mean, he's trying to sniff for any kind of uh, animal smell. But it's not. It's a solid piece of metal, combustion, gas, and chamber. But he thinks it's a toy. There he is. It's a good guard dog, though. Okay, so there we go. We got that on there. We're gonna give it a little wipe down and then we're gonna start the phase of, um, you know, troubleshooting our alarm some more. And then actually at last, you know, well, hopefully it'll be great. Like I said, it's gonna be a fun challenge because then we gotta actually maybe drop the scooter in order to take the cylinder head out because we tried to take it out last time and hit this bar right here, even though we had it tilted like this, going upward, didn't actually help us there. So now we're gonna go ahead and try to do it uh, with the engine mount taken off i think if we take the engine mount off this will still probably be intact you could probably keep intact but probably be, might be okay but we'll definitely take our exhaust out so i won't get damaged in the product i just touched that a little bit lightly luckily it wasn't on for too long 
So we're gonna prepare everything. We're gonna put a decompression to it. Another thing I wanna share with you guys is uh, uh, my handlebars here. Unfortunately, I realize now that the handlebars and the Chinese scooter, they're made unwell because they actually come forward. And when you're riding, now what's the point of seeing your chest, right? You need to actually see the side vehicle. So even when I turn it this way, I can't see the side wheel. wheel. Only when, okay, here I'll go. I'll put it right here in level I. That way you can see it. So if you look at it right here, right? That's, that's going way out, right? If I go in here like this, uh, I probably will be able to see it, but not really. So this is the level of my eye right now, see? So when you come to the level of my eye, you can't see it, right? The only way is you tilt this back a little bit. And then you could possibly see the back of the road on the side of you. And that's very dangerous. The same thing with this one. You cannot see the back of the road unless you squat lower like this. And then this is tilted, you know, a certain way you can actually see it. So what I'm gonna do is, and then also my oil port here, when I put the cover back on, it covers it. So I really can't see my brake fluid level. So instead of actually keeping the mount here, because what it is is there's a groove in the bar itself that locks in. So what I'm gonna do is probably pre-drill another hole so I can actually move from that hole slot that's bringing it inward because I can't push it back. Even if I try, you don't want to because there's actually a lock pin that goes into the bar here. So what I'm gonna do is take off the assembly and also maybe I can troubleshoot my kill switch too to make sure it's there and also my ignition starter here. So we can see the wires clearly which ones are what. Uh, but I wanna be able to pre-drill another hole and move this whole light, I mean not light, but um, mirror a little bit back more. When I push it back more, this also will should follow and I can actually see a little bit my um, brake fluid you know, display here. Because right now once the, this hard plastic shell comes up, it comes up like this way and they, they make a little loop right here like this, but it's nonsense because you still can't see it like from up top like this. What's the point, right? Making that little loop. So if I can tilt it backward a little bit, I can actually see a little bit more of this and also get my mirror to be a little bit more inclined up. That way I can see the back roads more easier. Another thing we did was, um, well, we installed the mount ramp and then the USB is connected to my anchor one, which is connected to the cigarette lighter charger. But another thing I'm also excited about is reconnecting back my bar and handlebar. Not does it give it like a balance of weight, but you can also see that it actually gives you a little bit more view from the rear, which is more important than anything is to make sure the visibility there. So I have it here under my things to do. There it goes somewhere here. My, oh. I thought maybe I brought it out, but let's see here. I might have it somewhere. Huh. Okay, let me find it to show you. It's made by CRG, which is a quality brand. Oh, there it is, right here. I had it right here all this time. Okay, so this is a CRG brand bar and mirrors you know they're in california surprisingly that's where we're at genuine genuine cr and there's some knockoffs out there but i recommend if you can get the real deal there's so much more quality now they sell the bar ends attachment separately that's how you can tell they can price it that way but you can see how nice these are these never fog up scratch or rust and there go they come with allen bolts speaking of not rust there is a point here that's rusting so we'll get we'll get that taken care of all right, here we go. So these ones will go in, in right here once I loop it in like this, right? And then I could turn it around. You can see how they adjust so many ways. And these are great. They're, they're the only ones that actually help me check out the rear uh, from the, where I'm driving. So I'll put these in there. I got a pair of them. So we'll get that installed as well as soon as we move this back here to make this useful. You know, right now it's just an abstract. I mean, unless you're a short rider, like you're like like sitting like, like here like a toddler or something, this will help you, this mirror here. But other than that, if you're pretty normal size, you know, five feet and up, this is useless. So this needs to be all tilted up that way. So a lot of things we're going to work on and try to get resolved, including the cylinder head. We might need to even, maybe we'll even change that to the Tatum when I'm dying to do that. That's why I'm excited that that actually maybe had a problem there, you know, posing me to actually fix that. So we'll go and... Get everything settled for right now. We'll turn off our gas. And uh, we'll prepare to um, get the alarm. If we can't get the alarm remote, we, we will. I'm very confident. Just in case we can't, though, I'll start cleaning the wires up and mounting this again on somewhere on the plastic where it vibrates the most easily, like a light touch. Something when people just touch the steering wheel and stuff, you can see here. It's just maybe something on the frame. I don't know. Kind of like when you hit the handlebars here, you can feel that the frame moves more than the plastic first. But I think everything moves accordingly. So we'll probably get that started as well. 
we'll change out this to a nicer fuse fuse line you can see oh actually I'll show you exactly how many pop we pop one of this array we pop the main fuse to our battery surprisingly we did something with the relay or starter it always does that luckily that it killed this fuse and not our other wiring system so that fuse was replaced this is the alarm fuse we went to three of these still and they were still working on it so we bought a box of them you can get them at the auto parts store that's how it looks like right here there are 15 amp fuses sometimes you can't tell their pop this one you might yeah this one you can definitely tell there you go a little burn mark on the very tip some people can actually fix these they say and we can use them again we'll see and then this one you can sure tell right here look at that separated right there in the middle that's the separate point and then this one here we pop from our main one so we're going through probably a kind of fuses trying to troubleshoot the alarm trying to get to working routing the wires somewhere in my uh, probably you can see that little broken contact right there so yeah so we're going to work on getting the fuses taken care of oh yeah i was going to show you that we're going to mount the new fuse instead of the old traditional one right here glass bulb one we're going to mount something like this this will probably be our ideal fuse here we have the fuse line Let's see that. there we go probably going to put this guy in here you can see here this takes a smaller kind of fuse and the light up fuse. Let's see if I can find that that fuse connection type. There we go. There, yeah, it takes one of these ones. And these things actually light up and glow. Smart fuse, they say. So this one will fit this one right here, even though this one looks bigger. It's the same fuse rating. So these are 10 amps. They're not 15 amps, like our stereo one here. But you can see it still will work. See our stereo one, I mean not our stereo one, our alarm one, our, um, you know, cyber and horn here, I call it, Nautilus. That one right there, that's the relay for it right here. See how it's the relay? And we could probably use the example here, how we're going to line up. So we're probably going to put the fuse line just like the, the, you know, horn one. You can see this one has a little cover too for the rain, which is kind of nice. So let me go ahead and just get that open real quick and show you. Kind of fuses in there. There you go, see that's, this comes with a, it's just a 30 amp fuse, wow, very big fuse. There you go, just in case you wire it to something else. See the electric grease, it's in there. I'm not sure if I put the electric grease or the company did, which is really good quality, they actually put the electric grease for you. So there you go. So this fuse is way better than I think the glass fuse. Not just for, you know, a little bit more secure, but this one looks like so exposing your wire still. It has only a little cover that cover it like this. This one's completely, you can see here the difference, completely sealed off from any moisture or anything getting between your line contacts. So this is just a little glass piece of wire there that'll break a certain uh, over amperage. So you can see here it just kind of clamps on here. And so we do cut it, we're gonna cut it exactly on the length. We might even re-tip it, because if you notice here, and put this on down the ground yeah if you notice here right here this right here I wanted to redo again I'll probably put a better contact here and then also we get we got some better um, what is the battery terminal they're more solid copper piece it's not these little small flimsy ones uh, I still call them little flimsy ones compared to the real big huge socket ones, but these might work just well So if we do that whole wiring I'll try to bring enough slack from the fuse here up to the, the battery terminal And actually just make a whole new wire here direct to the battery This looks like it has enough slack to do that and if we need to we can even bring the fuse all the way up near the battery too So they'll be more protected in the in the closed seat cover versus on the bottom like that So yeah, that's our pretty much our plan here that we're gonna do so hopefully everything will work out. You'll see me. I'll be able to uh, tap in the solder and everything like that. Michael from NCY Store. We'll catch you in the next video.